Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining this session for IFRC Data and Digital Week. Thank you for joining. Um, this session is Global Impact with Open Source, ODK for Mobile Data Collection. Uh, we're going to have a brief panel discussion, um, followed by plenty of time from the rest of the participants to ask questions and discuss uh, Open Data Kit and Mobile Data Collection. Uh, today, here uh, with me, I have Yao, uh, founder and a CEO of ODK, um, Raquel, Senior Disaster Management Officer and Information Management Lead at Spanish Red Cross, um, and then Alperin and uh, Seme from Turkish Red Crescent, uh, Monitoring and Evaluation Analysis Team Leader and Process Monitoring Assistant working on our data quality. Um, I'll give uh, maybe each of them uh, just a quick moment to tell a little bit more about themselves uh, and introduce themselves. Yeah. Sure, I'll be, I'll be glad to go. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, it's great to see all the, the folks in, in the chat. Uh, my name is Yao. I'm one of the founders and CEO of ODK. Uh, helped to start the project in 2008 as part of my PhD work at the University of Washington, and I've been literally working on it every day um, ever since. I'm based here in San Diego, so it's about 6.30 in the morning, but I, am, I haven't had any coffee, but I'm excited to talk to you all about data collection. Raquel? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Raquel Bernedo. I am Disaster Management Officer at Spanish Red Cross, as Dan said. And uh, I started in Spanish Red Cross working oh. as a delegate in 2014. And since then, I started working with ODK and mobile data collection. And we have been implemented in, implementing ODK in several missions and in several projects since then. Since then. Uh, nice to be here and hello to everyone. Thank you. Uh, Alfred? Thank you. I hope everyone can hear me. Okay, oh, good. Uh, my name is Alfred. I am the head of MNE Analysis Unit at TRC. Uh, our primary mandate is to do monitoring and evaluation for the ESSM program. And we have what we call as data and research oriented MNE, which focuses on surveying our beneficiary households in every quarter. And we have our sample size is quite big because the size of the program and ODK is the primary tool that we are using that and it was quite uh, instrumental in also developing our data quality system. Uh, so that's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, ESSN is a emergency social safety net program. It's the biggest humanitarian program in the history of the EU supporting refugees living in Turkey. So pretty impressive project that he's in, involved in if you're not that if you weren't familiar with that acronym when he dropped it um, and Semi. Um, hello, uh, I'm sorry I cannot open my uh, camera because uh, I have problem with my uh, computer. Uh, I'm joining the session with my uh, phone. Uh, that's why uh, this is Semi. I'm working as process monitoring assistant in TRC. Uh, I am responsible for data collection, uh, data cleaning and data quality, basically. Uh, thank you. Great. Thank you for joining. I'm glad you were able to get past those technical difficulties. So, Yao, can you tell us um, in a quick explanation uh, what ODK is for someone who, who might not be familiar with it? And in non-technical terms, so if you don't have to be a oh, software no. developer to understand. Not non-technical terms. Okay, um, I would say um, ODK lets you build powerful offline forms to collect and analyze the data you need wherever it is. It's proven at scale, it's trusted across sectors, and it's made possible by a welcoming community of people, community of people just like you. Is that 30 seconds? That's about 30 I'm, seconds. Even less than that. Um, <laughs> And so I think in your introduction, you briefly mentioned that this started when you were doing your PhD. Yeah. Um, can you give us like the brief history of, of then to now? Like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I so I think, um, I don't know if I can do a brief history, uh, but basically um, I was in Tanzania at the time um, doing some, um, um, some work, research work, looking for how we can make um, technology that could make the lives of the underserved a little better. And uh, I got a call from my advisor, Gaetano Borrell at the time. Um, and he said he was heading to Google to work on this data collection platform. And I, I said, I was not interested <laughs> in leaving Tanzania to come and work on it. Long story short, there's a bunch of people at the University of Washington, um, Carl Hartung, Waylon Burnett, 
Gaetano, who was her advisor, Brian Dorenzi, Tep, who are all sort of working in this space. And Gaetano got a chance to go to Google to build out this new data collection platform. And that's sort of how it got started. Um, I didn't want to do it. I thought it was going to be a bad idea, but Carl and Waylon convinced me. I joined the team and it's been magic ever since. Um, so that's sort of how it started. Well, we're certainly glad that you you changed your mind. <laughs> um, so I, for each of the panelists now, um, can you share a brief success story, uh, sometime that you used ODK where it really worked well or perhaps it, it managed to save the day? Um, starting off, Raquel, if you want to kick it off. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, we ha we did um, a big project in Greece in the immigration crisis, uh, in the Europe migration crisis, and we have been uh, replicating that model in different projects. And right now we are uh, in a project in West Africa, uh, a migration project in which uh, uh, migrants coming from different countries, five countries, uh, Niger, uh, Mali, Senegal, um, uh, Gambia and, and, missing, and Burkina Faso, uh, migrants go to, uh, to Red Cross facilities and then they are registered. Uh, its beneficiary carries a, a QR code so they can, every time they go to a, serve, to a Red Cross or Red Crescent post, they can show that uh, in order to do follow up of that person. And, and it also the QR, the QR code um, is also used to be able to record the activities that uh, the project is performing. So it's a really good way of uh, taking care of the person because you have a specialized and specific and personalized uh, follow up of that person and the needs that uh, he or she might have. And also it's a very good way of being uh, monitoring the systems and the activities that uh, they are performing in the project. Also, uh, it has been very useful using this uh, also in terms of cleaning data, because sometimes when you have different uh, places where you are uh, doing different uh, activities, it's sometimes it's easy to uh, get wrong with the place uh, when, when, you select, when you select it. But usually what we try to do is that uh, with the metadata, we are able to record uh, the different places through different um, mechanisms, for example, uh, recording the, the user that is linked with the different places. And this has been helping us uh, for a long time to be able to have a, a, a good cleaning, a good data cleaning. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, Alfred and Semed, do you want to talk about uh, with Turkish Red Crescent? Uh, yeah, well, uh, I actually want to say on a daily basis, <laughs> ODK saves us quite a lot because of the complexity of the surveys. But uh, uh, one specific case is, well, uh, we, had, we, we have a survey called Intersector Vulnerability Survey that's uh, a very large household level survey that tries to measure the household welfare. Uh, we designed that survey with IFRC before the start of COVID pandemic. Uh, it was supposed to be a face-to-face -face. and then with the pandemic of course we had to switch our model to, to the remote data collection and it's a, a one point around one and a half hour long survey and it's a very complex there are certain cross questions to check the entries to make sure and also there are some other logical controls that ensures data quality and ODK allowed us to design uh, uh, implement that survey remotely because of its uh, the system and it's uh, uh, the way it is. Oh, I can't remember the word. Flexible, sorry. Uh, the way it's flexible, it's really allowed us to do that and uh, get a high quality of data from those surveys. And if anyone does is not familiar with remote data collection, it's the less preferred method of data collection, especially for a long survey, because uh, people tend to uh, basically uh, finish the survey at some point because we don't want to hang up in the phone for one and a half hour and the data quality is usually very low compared to face to face but ODK ensured us to uh, have really good data quality for that survey and semi maybe can elaborate more on the data quality aspect of it because it's the core compo component of our data quality system.
Samir, did you have some stuff to add? Um, yeah. Um, actually, uh, before ODK, we were using uh, some kind of system that made by uh, Turkish Red Crescent uh, software engineers called Gochman system. Uh, and uh, with the Gochman system, uh, it was so hard for us to, you know, make any changes on our service. Uh, with uh, starting using uh, ODK, uh, we can make our, our changes and we can uh, put some questions to check other questions. Like uh, if there is two women living in a household, there cannot be uh, three pregnant women in the family. So uh, we can prevent uh, any uh, mis uh, miscalculation and, uh, you know, uh, bad data uh, that helped us a lot, actually. Great, and for everyone who's joined, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them into the chat um, or just jot them down on a piece of paper and we'll have a, a time here in a little bit to open it up for, for questions and discussion. Um, so we'll definitely be able to, to get to any questions you might have. Um, so kind of jumping off of that question, um, open source can sometimes be seen as unreliable when compared to proprietary software or other solutions. Um, so I'm wondering if it was hard to convince your organization to start using ODK and what that process was like and if you faced any challenges. It sounds like Turkish Red Crescent maybe had um, an in-house solution that uh, was working, but um, you faced some difficulties in, in customizing forms and being able to adapt it. Um, so what was it, it like to, to switch to ODK? We can start with Turkish Red Crescent, maybe. Thank you. Uh, well, it took some time to convince the organization. Actually, the hardest part was it wasn't about the open source part, but to justify the need for an additional uh, data collection tool, because we had several in-house solutions, but they weren't really designed for uh, household level welfare surveys that has with uh, high, with large samples. It was more about 100 or 20, 200. Uh, surveys sort of so they, they were really basic systems and that didn't really allow us to also do the offline data collection which is required in some uh, contexts even in in the field sometimes the teams don't have the, that internet connection in some regions so first we had to justify that once uh, especially the IT was convinced that we require a specific software for our surveys then uh, they actually come up with a way that sort of an isolated server because that uh, we have to also have the public link access to the surveys. So it's not connected to other uh, TRC systems, but it's an isolated server that we also have that public access to it. So we can share the links with other organizations if you want some data from them. Have you been able to retire any of the other systems uh, now that you have ODK or are all, all the ones that still exist? Yeah. Uh, for the cash programs, the ODK became the primary data collection tool. So we don't collect uh, any data from Gochman, as Semi mentioned. And our other business units, they also started to use the ODK. We gave them the training, also taught them how to design basic forms with the XLS format. And now I, th I think we had some feedback, Semi can elaborate more on that, but they think it's easier to actually design a form with the XLS uh, format. Great. Um, and for those on the call um, who are joining and maybe don't have familiarity with ODK, uh, Yao, can you give us a quick definition of XLS form? Yeah, XLS form is, a, I call it a form design standard. It's basically a way to design your forms, which can end up being like mini applications um, in Excel. And so the way you can think about it is each row in the Excel spreadsheet is a question that the person sees and each column is a property of that of that um, um, of that question. So um, XLS form is now used by pretty much most all the data collection platforms. And so you see it using it in ODK, Service CTO, Comcare has I think some support for it. Ona, a Survey One Two Three. Um, so it's sort of become the de facto standard for form design. Um, I personally love it because it lets you build these lower and complicated forms. And then you can also share it very easily and do version tracking in Google Sheets or, or on, on an Excel. But basically, it's an Excel-based way to design a form. And Raquel, I think Spanish Red Cross has a bit longer history with 
ODK. Um, when did you all first adopt it? And was it, do you remember if that was a challenge and how that went? Yes, um, it was in 2015 that in the, in, in the European Migration Crisis in Greece, we deployed some emergency response units, uh, mostly uh, health teams and psychosocial support teams. And then we also sent a, a team of uh, IM um, that were going to see the possibilities of uh, gathering data with ODK. At the beginning, we didn't have any server at all, so uh, we had to use some server of one of the delegates that was deployed that was working in the University of Navarra, and, and he was an IT person in the university, so he set up uh, some server so we could use it because um, in, in Spanish Red Cross, uh, the IT department were very didn't like much the open source um, applications, and it, it took us a lot of time to, <laughs> to, to get uh, our servers. Uh, in fact, uh, once uh, we continue with the operation and the data that we collected was more and more uh, bigger, um, then uh, we had uh, not only the data, we also we saw what data we were collecting and what uh, we were creating, the dashboards that we were creating to be able to do a follow-up of the operation because the Spanish Red Cross had the information management team and uh, we were collecting data from nine different national societies working in the country in, in seven different places. So all the data was centralized and that gave us the opportunity to increase our capabilities in terms of hardware and we got an isolated, an isolated uh, server. Um, from then, uh, there were some concerns about the, um, the GDPR, the, the data protection regulation. So since then, what we have tried is not to collect uh, personal data, but only statistical data that uh, in one sense is good because uh, the, the, people, that the people's data is pro are protected. And at the same time, we had the information that we need and we don't need uh, more. But now uh, what we want to do is to go into ODK Central because we know that it has some good features that will allow us uh, to comply with this um, GDPR with the uh, data protection regulation uh, global, that is the one that is applicable in Europe now. And it has been a long way. This started in 2015, but uh, at the end of 2000, 2016, we got the servers. And from then on, we have been improving and using more and more ODK uh, mostly in our international cooperation projects, uh, because we have uh, at national at domestic level, we have proprietary software, and also now we are in Microsoft. So the tendency is to try to work as much as possible into the into the SharePoint and so on. But uh, nevertheless, we still do some some things uh, in ODK at domestic level as well. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, moving back to you, how do you make such an awesome piece of software and how is it sustainable? Um, here we've heard, you know, Spanish Red Cross has been using it for, for many years. In the world of software and technology, it seems like every couple months, some new app, some new tool is coming out. Um, and yet this awesome piece of software that you don't charge the majority of your users for has been around for, for many years and has continued to improve. Um, how have you made that happen? Well, it's not easy, Dan. <laughs> I, can tell you, I can tell you that. Um, yeah, it's a really good question. So um, maybe I can take a step back and say this might be surprising to some people, but the, the bulk of the work on ODK has always been done by paid developers. Um, and so ultimately, um, we need money to make ODK. In the old days, those paid developers were grad students, you know, but they were still paid. They're not paid a lot, but they're paid nonetheless. And so historically, we've used sort of a blend of academic grants and consulting work um, to pay for ODK. And that approach has been really hard to manage because grants, as you all know, they typically tend to fund program specific work that the grant giver cares about. And consulting um, is great as high margin, but it tends to reward really short-term thinking. So none of those things are great for actually making the software better. Uh, so while we survive with grants and consulting over the last decade, we are actually now making a move towards cloud hosting as the way we um, we fund ODK. And if you if you don't mind my saying, uh, we call our, our cloud hosting ODK Cloud. So ODK Cloud 
it's sort of the same ODK that millions of people use and love, um, but it's, it's made even faster, more reliable, more secure on our cloud. And so the platform provides automatic updates and backups and, and uptime guarantees. So folks like the Red Cross can sort of focus on collecting data and not running IT systems, which is, which is no fun. Um, the cloud also comes with uh, support from experts like myself um, with years of field experience who can sort of help people. Um, to sort of answer your, your question about sustainability, ODK Cloud sort of gives us stable and predictable revenue that we can use to make better uh, ODK better for everybody. Um, and because of that revenue source, we can also be more selective about grants and consulting work to make sure that, that those things align. Um, I should sort of end with the thing that I like about the cloud hosting is that it actually now aligns with our user needs because one of the biggest challenges with ODK um, isn't just sustainability, is that folks who want to use it may not have any IT skills um, or not be able to support it. And so with the cloud hosting, you don't need IT skills um, to get that and you can sort of be up and running uh, that way. So it ends up being a virtuous cycle. And for those who don't have any funding and we care deeply about those folks, um, we still provide the software for free. Um, and we still have community support for free, and that's really never going to change. Um, so that's how we're going to make it sustainable is that we charge for cloud hosting. The software remains free and open source uh, for those who don't have that funding. Great, thank you. Um, Raquel and, and Alper and, and Sami, what's your favorite ODK feature? We've seen a lot of improvements over the, over the past years. Um, and so just curious if there's one that, that stands out, uh, either one of the, the widgets or question type um, or some functionality that has, has been built in over the years. Um, you can open accounts on ODK and assign a enumerator to a, uh, a survey. And uh, I, I like, I quite like that. And one additional thing that I want to mention, that this is not maybe, uh, this is not exactly the ODK feature, but uh, it's Excel as form feature. You can use uh, X, uh, HTML uh, in some way in Excel as form. Uh, that's so cool, actually. Uh, you can, you know, <laughs> make, uh, uh, well, uh, make your writings uh, colorful and big and small and that, that kind of thing. Uh, I quite like that too. So styling, styling your questions and even including emojis if you want. And another fun way to, to spice up your, your survey oh, questions. Yeah. <laughs> I have to be honest, and I, last features, I, I have not been able to check them, but I, I go for the traditional using images in, in the options uh, because I think that um, is really useful when you are in the field and somebody that has not done the, the form or the survey has to decide if uh, some, in, in an its assessment, for example, it's at, if something has been partially damaged, fully damaged or not damaged, but not damaged at all. And using images to represent uh, what would mean each of that options, I think that is very useful for the people that, um, that collect the data and for the people that afterwards have to analyze it. Um, and other thing that uh, I am in love with is with the, all the constraints that you can add uh, to be able to have a better quality data and that helps a lot in, in, the, um, in the data cleaning. So yeah, those, I think those are my favorites. Great, thank you. And yeah, so, uh... Instead of looking backwards, looking forwards, is there a cool feature in the pipeline that we should be excited about and looking forward to? Absolutely, we've got so many cool features coming. Um, I think we've been accelerating actually how quickly we've been shifting things in, in ODK. Um, so in the next few, well, I should take a step back and say, um, we try not to like promise ship dates, but since we're all friends here, <laughs> Um, in the next few months, um, we're going to add sort of two big features that I'm really excited about. So the first is multiple project support um, so that data collectors can easily switch between different ODK projects. So um, each project will have its own look and feel, its own settings. Um, so you can just quickly toggle between them. And along with this sort of multiple project support, uh, we're also going to be adding a sort of a visual refresh of the iconic ODK uh, interface. And I think people are going to love this, this new change. So that's the first thing. It's multiple project support. 
The second thing on the server side um, is submission editing and approve reject uh, workflows. So uh, when data comes in, when a submission comes in, you'll be able to decide whether or not it's valid or not, either reject it or accept it or edit it right there. And then when you edit it, you can see that entire edit history um, and even leave comments. And then all your downstream tools will see those latest edits. So your data set will always be clean. So you can do a little bit of data cleaning um, in ODK. And both of these things will be arriving in the next month or month and a half. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. Longer term, um, we're gonna be taking on entity-based data collection uh, to make it easier for folks to collect data about a person or a place or a thing. Um, and so if you do sort of baseline or follow-up studies or something that looks like case management, uh, and you think the current solutions that are out there are too complicated or too hard to use, I think, I think you're blown away um, by what we, we've got planned. Um, Dan has seen some of the initial uh, work that we've been doing. Um, and yeah, it's going to be amazing. So really looking forward to that. That one, I don't know when it's going to ship. It could be like 10 years from now, hopefully, hopefully sooner than that. Uh, but it's a really big feature and I'm really excited about it. Great, yeah, definitely uh, looking forward to that, especially the, the entity-based data collection. I think that'll have a lot of implications for Red Cross, Red Crescent and the work we do um, supporting families and individuals affected by crisis. Um, Raquel and uh, Alfred and Semi, uh, has ODK helped you empower non-technical persons to have a more active role in survey, survey implementation. I think, Alfred, you mentioned the that XLS form has made it much easier for people outside the IT department to modify forms. And Raquel, you mentioned being able to implement all of that, um, the constraints and survey logic. Um, but anything in particular that you want to mention in terms of its ease of use for, for non-technical people? Well, from the perspective of the different roster members that we have in our emergency response unit, uh, not, uh, not the IT or the IM uh, roster, uh, there are a lot of people now that always that they think in, in, in doing, in collecting some data, they think directly in ODK. So uh, for a long time, I was called uh, Raquel ODK in the IT department, <laughs> but <laughs> that has made that uh, we are there and that we are using it. And, and I think that a lot of people have uh, trying, I have tried to do our, lear um, our learning uh, trainings that we have uh, to be able to learn how to collect data. And um, other people that are a little more technical has gone from for the more technical XLS form uh, trainings as well. And the, the good thing is that you don't have to be very techy uh, and, and it can be used by, by different people. And I think that it has also empowered the, the fact of the people being aware of the importance of the data and the importance of collecting uh, good data in mobile data collection and how that helps in not spending later hours and hours of processing data writing it from the paper to the computer. So I think that, yeah, at least in Sp the Spanish Red Cross, we have done a really awareness of the good thing of using ODK and we are there and we are improving and, and going further. Uh, well, as a part of our cash programs, it's already being used, but in the larger TRC, I hope uh, in near future, it will be the primary tool. Is <laughs> that's what we are hoping. And as our long-term goal, uh, we are also thinking about developing a sort of a data collection training, in-house training that first layouts the principles of the data collection, what should be considered when designing a force by a, a survey and you know the things that we have to be careful about to question design and then also of course the xls form and how you can use it how to actually design your forms that's something we are thinking of course that's that's long term the current our current workload actually <laughs> prevents us doing that but we are hoping to achieve that uh, uh hopefully at, at some point and in the cash program side, uh, I think in, in the ODK will become a more widely used even the other uh, business units. So our, our outreach teams are actually using it right now, if I'm not mistaken. And definitely our, uh, the application centers that receive applicants or updates for the, uh, the programs, they're also using that for their daily and weekly data entries. And well, hopefully it will be more uh, increase in the near future.
Great, thank you. Um, earlier in the, the chat, somebody asked about a forum that can be recommended and ODK does have a, a forum. Uh, yeah, I'll drop the link. It's just forum.getodk.org um, that has over 1400 um, very friendly people you've mentioned that are always discussing the, the software and supporting each other in use cases, in troubleshooting, in understanding how to better better use it. Um, and sometimes it seems uh, like the kind of the core ODK team is doing the bulk of the, the answering. Um, they say community support is available for free. And a lot of times that means the, the core ODK team is providing support for free. Um, they're very generous in, in providing answers. And uh, people can get involved um, with the ODK project and kind of support it in one way by being active on the forum and, and helping other people and uh, discussing the future of the project there, um, helping answer questions using their own knowledge. Um, for Yao, how else can people get involved with the ODK project and, and support support this great piece of software? Yeah, for sure. Um, good question. The, the most obvious way is to use ODK Cloud because that's what ends up paying for ODK. So I, I do have to, as sort of lead of the project, I always have to mention that now. Um, I would say um, currently, if you speak another language besides sort of English, French, and Spanish, um, you know, ODK Central, our new server, um, doesn't have a lot of translations. The mobile app has about 50 translations, which are amazing, um, but the new server doesn't. Uh, and so um, we want to get as many people as possible using ODK, the server side. And so I'm gonna drop a link here um, to a forum post where we talk about how folks can kind of help translate central into a bunch of different languages. So there's, there's links there, and then there's a translation guide. And um, you can have incredible impact on the project by providing a translation. So please do that. So that's the first thing. The, 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 the second thing that you mentioned is actually quite good is that on the forum, it is true that the more people that we have from who are not on the core team who are answering support questions, the more time the core team has to like ship features. Um, and so if you know a little bit about ODK, or even if you don't, um, you can be we can help others get started. And that's a really huge contribution. Um, another huge contribution is providing feedback on issues and features. So sometimes I'm, you know, in pre-pandemic times, you know, I'd be out in the field and I'd see a user like really struggling with ODK and they've run into a bug, um, but they hadn't said anything. They hadn't complained to their supervisor. Their supervisor hadn't complained to us. Uh, and so if there is something that you're doing in ODK that doesn't make sense, makes your life uncomfortable in any way, it's not working perfectly, you should complain. You shouldn't just suffer in silence. Um, and so that's a really huge contribution is that if there's a bug or just anything unexpected that's happening, please, 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 please let us know because chances are, if you are having an issue, that means like literally millions of people could be having the same issue. And we're not, you know, we're not mind readers. So please um, just let us know on Twitter, on Instagram. I don't care where you let us know. Just let us know that you're having an issue so we can track it down and fix it for everybody. Um, in general, I would say, that um, ODK has spread because people find success with the software and they end up you know, really enjoying and loving it. Um, and so if ODK doesn't bring a smile to your face when you use it, just please let me know. I'm gonna drop my email in the chat here. I'm extremely easy to find on the internet. Um, so um, I'm why an aqua pretty much everywhere. So if there's something that's not working well with you with ODK, please do let me know um, and we'll do our best to take care of you. So that's how you can make it better. Just let me know. Great. Yeah, thanks so much. Um, Alfred, I know uh, IFRC, Turkish Red Crescent, and Ghetto Decay have had a um, partnership around the um, ESSN program. Can you all talk briefly on, on that and how that uh, developed and how that's worked out uh, for the two organizations, even though um, you were self-hosting the server, but you're still managing to support the project without having to necessarily use ODK Cloud? Uh, thank you. Uh, well, uh, when we were looking for an, a software that was su more suitable for our needs, we had two uh, candidates, the, uh, the ODK and Kobo. And we decided to go with ODK first because that we would be able to actually uh, get in touch with Yao and make some requests and also uh, we discussed with our IFRC colleagues that we would be able to get some additional features if we can contract the Yo, uh, Yo and his team. And as part of that, there were some 
uh, the our primary surveys are actually done remotely. They are smaller surveys of where we uh, track the program indicators, and we would require the web interface for that, the Encoto interface. So, as part of that partnership, uh, now the, that web interface and the ODK Central is sort of uh, it's just one solution. At the beginning, we had two different servers. It was a bit complex for us, but uh, thanks to Yav and his team, they managed to uh, bring that as one single solution. And in the ESSM, since ESSM program will continue for 2021 and 22, if I'm not mistaken, that we will again continue that partnership. We talk about some uh, additional features. Uh, the, I, don't know if I'm. <laughs> can I talk about that? Yeah, we we I think sent some requests. Uh, okay, I got the green light. So the thing is, when you have so many surveys and uh, many number of enumerators, uh, tracking those surveys is sort of a problem. And we normally do that manually. We send them a call list, and they do the tracking by themselves. And at some point, they can mix up the uh, list. They can. Uh, they they can place some multiple calls to the same households so that we have to solve them everything once the data collection is over, which is a pain in the it's a pain by itself. And what we requested as part of the, that extension that we did that assigning surveys or households to the enumerators so they will know in advance which households or which people they are reaching out. So we won't be have, we we don't need to track them manually, which will definitely uh, increase the data quality in the long term and it will make us make things easier for us to track those calls or household visits etc so i hope i i provide a comprehensive answer <laughs> yeah that's great thank you um so there's um a question in the chat uh is odk and kobo the same thing um so Kobo is kind of a lot of the components are built on top of the the source code um, that's ODK, and they actually they share the same uh, Android application. Um, Kobo Collect is is just ODK Collect with the uh, application logo and name switched out, and some of the colors changed. Um, yeah, do you want to talk a little bit more about the relationship between those two pieces of soft software, and maybe also how ODK supports the larger mobile data collection ecosystem in general? Yeah, so ODK and Kobo are, are mortal enemies. We've hated each other. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, so um, they're sort of uh, all these tools, um, actually, um, ODK, Comcare, Service ETO, Kobo, uh, ONA, all sort of share a, a long and, and, and complicated history. Um, I would say that um, Kobo primarily uh, has its own hosted server. And it's a server that's that's often free for humanitarian purposes. It's free for humanitarian purposes and has some some limits based there. Um, and so the Kobo server and the ODK server are really totally different projects and 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 tools. They have similar features, but they're different features, so they're they're different. They all share the same uh, form design language, and so you can move a form from one server to the other, and it works just great. Um, the Kobo Collect, which a lot of people interface with, Dan is exactly right. It is really just an exact copy of ODK Collect. And in fact, the ODK team, as of a few months ago, now maintains that, that copy. Uh, so the only difference between Kobo Collect and ODK Collect is that, yeah, there's a different logo and different settings, but it's basically, it's the same piece of code. So that's great. Um, and so we work together with the Kobo team to make sure that the mobile client is up to date and working well. Um, and so we're, we've got a great partnership there. Um, more broadly, what ODK we try to do is to build um, foundational tools that sort of can help support an ecosystem. And so um, as part of that, we sort of have this technical advisory board that Dan sits on, um, that folks from Kobo, folks from ONA sit on to sort of help shepherd the entire ecosystem forward. Uh, and so if you use tools like XLS Form, or you use um, Kobo, or you use uh, ONA or use ODK um, or use NEMO, which is an, another piece from the Carter Center. Um, these folks and, and Keto, all these folks sort of collaborate in an ecosystem and ODK is sort of the, we sort of hold that forum and, and make sure that those standards and specs uh, remain compatible. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, I think it does. Um, so 
now would like to open it up uh, to the wider wider group. Um, if there's anybody with a question, um, you can please add it to the chat. Um, you we you can unmute yourself and and say it, or um, if you'd like to click the reactions button at the bottom and raise your hand, uh, then I can also unmute you and and call on you. So any of those three things, if there's questions, please. Um, So um, one of the, the neat features of ODK, so there's a question, um, wants to confirm if ODK works offline. Absolutely, the whole thing works offline. Um, we really optimize the offline first use case. So you can, we have users who are out in the Amazon rainforest uh, who are collecting data for months at a time and um, the forms and the data get synchronized to the server when a connection is found that can be over wi-fi or 3g or some other data connection and we work, we, we work really hard to also make sure that that connection uses the, the least amount of data um, as possible so it works beautifully offline um, yeah and additionally um sometimes also there's i've heard questions about uh gps and collecting location coordinates that um uses a um if the phone has the hardware uh, which most every phone these days has a, a GPS receiver. Um, you just need a clear view of the sky so that it can um, locate itself based on satellite signals. And it doesn't require cellular network or a Wi-Fi or anything like that. Um, so you can still collect location coordinates even if you don't have internet connectivity. Um, one of the neat features about ODK is being able to, to hook into other pieces of software like data visualization software. Um, Raquel, I know the Spanish Red Cross has um, used Pentaho um, to do some of their, their data viz and uh, dashboarding. Um, can you talk briefly on kind of your experience uh, integrating ODK with a separate piece of software for an additional value add? Yeah, sure. Uh, what uh, we have been working is with Pentaho that is an open source uh, business intelligence tool. And it has the, it, uh, at the end, you can have the same visualizations that you might have with Power BI. But the good thing of Pentaho is that um, you can connect directly uh, as well as with Power BI with the database. And uh, you can configure the extract, transformation, and load uh, system to adapt your data to the uh, visualizations that you want to create. This way, uh, is, um, the resources are used in a better way and, and all the information is available at real time. Every time that a new instance is sent to the server, it automatically uh, is sent to, to Pentaho and then you have information real time. Uh, also, uh, you can configure if you want it real time or, every, or if you want to update the information every X time. But it also has uh, good features, like for example, reporting. Uh, you can create automatic, uh, automatically reports and send them. Uh, you can create dashboards, and we we have made um, also applications that you can do case management with Pentaho, uh, just following with the different QR uh, QR codes that we provide the beneficiaries. Uh, we have a few even during during COVID. Uh, what we did uh, is that we created uh, uh, different forms, ones to, uh, for registering the activities that we were performing at domestic level because our proprietary software was uh, not in line with the new activities. So in the time that uh, the proprietary software was updated, we collected the information through ODK forms uh, via web with Enketo. And also we, we, record, uh, we, got, we collected the activities information and also uh, the logistics uh, that we needed. Uh, this means that we were uh, co collecting all the materials that the different branches had in every province to be able to know who, what, uh, mat uh, which materials were available where, uh, in, what, in which places. And we could visualize this through Pentaho that it was very easy because you could uh, either select by, by the different areas, province, regions or even uh, the material that you were looking for. 
and logistically speaking, this helped us a lot. So yes, uh, Pentaho is one of the the most uh, software is the principal software that we are uh, using for data visualization uh, because it has a really good features. And also we are starting to use uh, Power BI uh, for more easy visualizations, let's say. Great, thank you. Yeah, was there anything you want to add about ODK Central and its OData feed and um, its API and how, how those things have come about? Yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, for the technical people, uh, the API is really beautiful. <laughs> if you've ever built um, something against a bad API, it's like the worst experience in the world. So uh, for the non-technical people, the API is basically a, a contract a set of rules that um, programmers use to sort of communicate with the server. Um, and ODK Central's API is, is well documented, it's stable, it's intuitive. And so it, makes, it means that you can move really quickly. The other thing about the API that's really great is that it's really the exact same API that we use. Um, and so you're not being hamstrung or limited in some way. I think there's some, I'm not gonna name any names. There's some other data collection tools where you you know, you have to pay more for the API, which never not make any sense to me. Um, so basically everything that you can do in the user interface, you can do via the API. So it's very powerful. For those who are not developers, um, uh, central, uh, exposes its data in a number of ways. And probably the most important ways to this technology called OData. Uh, and what OData means is that you can connect Excel or Power BI, sometimes, sometimes Tableau directly to the server. So you just pop in your username and password and then you can get all your data um, live updating either in a spreadsheet or in a visualization and you can share that visualization out to folks. Um, so that's the OData feed. Um, we also do have um, other downstream tools. So if you use R, um, we have a great, there's a great R package called RUODK, and I'll, I'll drop some links down um, below. Um, uh, RUODK, which is built by one of our collaborators, um, and lets you connect R directly to the server. So you can get a list of submissions, a list of projects, uh, and analyze that data directly from R. Um, so lots of um, integration points, which is one thing that we really wanted to focus on um, with ODK Central. And if you run into any problems using the API, just hop on the forum and we'll be glad to, to assist and, and get you started. And there's a question from Tim K. Um, what is the roadmap for ODK? What enhancements and improvements to expect? And so I know um, I will mention again that the, the forum is a great place that you can uh, log on there. And there's um, discussions about upcoming features. If, you, uh, is there some, if there's something that's missing, like we encourage people to uh, start a post and a discussion about features they'd like to see. Um, and if, you know, lots of people need it and want it, uh, it's a great way to um, get it incorporated into the future plans for the project. Um, but yeah, do you want to talk a little bit more about kind of the direction of the project? And Yeah, for sure. You know, I had mentioned earlier, um, Tim, um, that, you know, we want to do multiple project support so data collectors can sort of easily switch between projects do a visual refresh and then adding submission, editing and approval reject workflows on the server side. And then long-term we want to do more entity-based data collection. I think um, in addition to the entity-based data collection, sort of we see as the future of the project, adding more geo support, which I know Dan loves, everybody loves a little more geo. Um, so uh, there's going to be more geographic support. So uh, for example, when your ODK currently is very form-based, you know, you're like fill a blank form, edit a save form, et cetera, et cetera. Um, with this new visual refresh and entity-based stuff, you will now see you know, a list of entities. So here are all the sites that I need to visit, or here are all the trees that I need to survey, or here are all the households I need to see. And you can see that in a list. And hopefully, I can't promise this, but our vision is that you also be able to see that on a map. So you switch from a list to a map, and you see a map of all the sites or, or, or entities that you need to go visit. And then you click on a particular entity, and then you can start filling out forms about the entity. So we really have a, what I think is an exciting vision for the, for the software on the entity side, and that will come with a lot of geographic support as well. Um, so that's where we're going, but that can change, Tim, based on what you say. Um, and so Dan is exactly right. Hop on the forum. If you have a different vision for the project or the features that are missing, uh, just let us know, and we'll do our best to sort of add it to the roadmap or find some way to slot it in so that um, ODK can do what you need it to do. Okay, great. Thanks so much. And we're coming up on the, the end of the hour. Uh, if there's any additional questions from the group, I think we still have time for a few more, if there are any. Can I ask a question? Yeah, you can ask a question of 
is it for yourself that you want to answer? You want to ask yes, I'm, I'm going to ask a question for myself and then answer it. So uh, nobody asked me what my favorite ODA feature was, okay. and I wanted to point it out. Uh, you know, ultimately, what makes ODK successful is the community, and that is my favorite feature um, because um, without people providing the feedback and without people telling others about how it's worked for them or how it hasn't, um, ODK wouldn't be everywhere. And uh, I was interviewed by a friend some time ago, and, and she she asked me, "How do we advertise ODK?" We don't. We don't have an advertising budget. Um, really, the people who advertise it are the people who find success with it and share it. Uh, and so, ODK is not possible without folks, you know, there's like 30, 40 people on the call, without folks like you on the call, without folks on the forum using it, uh, providing feedback. Um, and so we can only be successful um, because of the folks who use it. So that ha has been my favorite feature from day one. And I, I hope that it will continue to be my favorite feature. Um, so um, for all those who, who use ODK, I really want to thank you. It's, it's, an, it's a privilege um, to be able to sort of help maintain the software um, and, and help it have so much impact. So that's all, that's all I want to say. That's my favorite feature. Great. Thank you. Yeah, that, terrific. Does anybody want to follow that up with a, a question? If it, hard to follow that up. You don't want to, uh, after such a great little, little call to action, but uh, happy to open like it up to for anything share, else. Uh... I would like to share a success story with uh, Yao. Uh, when we, I was uh, working with the Syrian Arab Red Crescent, and uh, uh, there were a problem where uh, when we collect the information, it was like paper work, and it took uh, three months to collect and uh, bring people to enter the data with all the human uh, mistake. And then uh, it used to take three months, three months. And then when you use the ODK, the data were collected like in uh, two, three days. Uh, so uh, for sure, it saved like almost uh, three months of, uh, of work uh, and mistakes. And uh, Raquel helped later with the, like some more uh, training and stuff. So it was uh, very good, worked very good for the Syria crisis. Thank you. Congrats on your success. Great, thank you for sharing that. So anybody else? Also, if anybody else want to share a success story and not just have a question? I can go. <laughs> uh, when we first had the ODK, uh, everyone was skeptical, actually, even within the cash program. <laughs> and after two months, <laughs> everyone was actually wanting to use the ODK. And the thing is, the way it was built, it was the one server, and we only had access to it. So then we had to come with a solution to give everyone else access with their own projects. And now <laughs> it, it became the next new thing in the DRC cash program, actually, that every single business unit has an ODK uh, account and whenever they need it, they can use it. <laughs> awesome. I guess I wanted to add that for those people that are afraid to use it, there is not only the forum, that uh, Joe and his team make an amazing job, but also inside the movement, there is a lot of knowledge and a lot of people that uh, can help. Um, I, I would say that do not, fear, do not be afraid of asking because uh, we have been all through that process and we have been developing different trainings, uh, we have been supporting each other. And, and there is also the mobile data collection working group that Dan and me are there together with Aero, uh, that is as well in this call, and we are always available uh, to help. So yeah, uh, I wanted to provide that message. Yeah, great point. Uh, Aero, do you think you can drop your email address into the chat? Um, and if people want to get on the mailing list for the um, mobile data collection working group sessions, uh, they can, can get added to that? If that's the best way to do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll send my email and uh, feel free to contact me. Do you have a, a quick elevator pitch for what the Mobile Data Collection Working Group is and why people should join? Yeah, well, uh, if you have any questions about anything related to mobile data collection, there's a group of more than 100 experienced people and uh, you can just uh, tap into the hive mind uh, by accessing the mobile data collection working group. So I'm sure that, that somebody will have an answer to your question regardless of how difficult it is. 
So I, I guess that's the key reason to join already. Yeah, and there's semi-regular meetings that, that um, in which people go over kind of problems and issues and people present on different ways they've used mobile data collection in the, in the movement. So yeah, another exactly. great another great network to, to tap into. Yeah, yeah, and we always have some uh, guest speaker who's presenting on, on some of the emerging things or, or success stories or, or use cases. So uh, there's always some learning involved as well. Great, thank you. Um, and so as we're coming up on the hour, I uh, just want to um, read it that there's some great ways to, to get involved with ODK. Um, if your organization um, has funding but lacks IT prow uh, an IT department that's willing to help you out, uh, ODK Cloud is a paid hosting option that goes directly back into the project and helps keep it uh, free and sustainable and always improving. Um, you can also talk to Yao and if you need a feature, um, there's a good chance that other people might need the feature as well. And if it aligns with the kind of the roadmap and needs the larger project, um, it's possible to kind of fund the development. And then that becomes available, not just for you, but for everybody um, working on the project. Um, you can contribute to the translations. So for both um, ODK Collect, which is available in um, quite a few languages, uh, but always uh, might need to have additional languages or updates. Um, and ODK Central, uh, the server um, has is newer, so has fewer languages. And so um, if you speak, can translate that, um, please volunteer for that. Um, you can answer questions on the forum, uh, forum.getodk.org. Um, the more questions that you answer, the less the, the core team has to answer, and they can spend more time writing code instead of answering uh, support questions on the forum. So that's a, a big help as well. Um, and providing feedback and reporting bugs. Um, don't suffer in silence, as SDL said. Um, they they want to know when something breaks or when something isn't working as expected. Um, it's probably not just you running into problems. And um, the sooner that they can identify those problems, the sooner they can fix them for everybody. Um, there's also a, a technical advisory board for the project. Um, I'm involved with the, the technical advisory board for uh, ODK. And Raquel, who's on, on one of the speakers, um, is involved with the ODKX advisory board, a, an offshoot project that um, if you go to any of the sessions are on RC2 relief this week, um, that, that piece of software is built on ODKX. Um, and those technical advisory boards are always looking for um, engaged, uh, excited people to, to help um, guide the projects. Um, so you know, consider joining the forums and, and asking about that. And when an election rolls around, uh, putting yourself forward to, to participate in, in one of those forums. Um, thank you, everybody, for, for joining, and I hope you uh, enjoy the rest of IFRC Data and Digital Week and continue to get involved with these kinds of initiatives uh, after this week. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much.